After I turned 15 in January 1979, my parents gave me a present, and it was to be able to go to the United States to visit my aunt in New York. So I went there, and I um, spent a few, a few months in there. Um, my aunt made the arrangement so I could go to this school that it was really like an adult school, but it was amazing because I was there all, the whole day learning English. And it was a great experience for me. But in Nicaragua, there had been some kind of political unrest that had been going on for years, but it was getting worse and worse. And uh, the news were just terrible. You know? I was so worried about my family. I was just 15, and I really didn't want to be away from them while they were going through these hard times. When I went back to Nicaragua, things were getting really bad. Um, because there have been these rebels that have been fighting for years to, to throw down the government. There was a point in which they decided to bomb that part of the city, to, to put more pressure on the rebels so they would leave. At that moment, all the radio stations in Nicaragua were censored. They were shut down. So we, we, we didn't know exactly what was going on, but then at night, we would try to listen to the, to the radio stations from Costa Rica. And they would tell us, you know, what was going on and how many people had died that day, how many families. And I knew that there were children, children dying from that. And then again, the next day it would happen again. And we would just watch that in horror. But at night, we would put our mattresses on the floor and we would sleep there just hoping that we would be safe from the bullets. And I remember thinking, okay, there are people dying. There are children dying right now. And I will ask in my, in my heart the question, why does God allow this to happen? Why doesn't he do anything to stop this? And uh, it was very hard. Um, I was not upset with God, but I just had that question you know, in my heart. Fortunately, something happened and the, the problem stopped and the president left the country. I remember vividly that day after the, the president of the, of the country left and the rebels were just celebrating out on the streets, the victory. You know, I think I have never lived another day like that in which everybody was just happy, feeling this joy that our problems were over. When I was about 16 or 17, we started attending college. And uh, I, I went to Universidad Centroamericana and my major was in industrial engineering. I always liked learning and you know, getting an education. And it was, it, was, it was a good school, but the situation in Nicaragua was just getting worse and worse and worse. So in 1984, I decided to marry a, a young man that I was dating. I had been dating him for years, and we just decided to, to get married. And we moved to San Francisco, California, where we both had family. My mother and my siblings came to join us like a year after I left. But, you know, it was not easy um, to start a new life in a new country because of the language, the climate. And uh, even though we had work, we were blessed to have work. We always had work. And for about two years in my marriage, everything was fine. Um, we had a baby around two years after we got married. It was our son, Javier, who was born there. And uh, he gave me a, a reason to keep going and to have hope for the future. When my, our son was like six months old, my husband lost the job that he had that was very stable. And I really don't know how everything started. You know, he, even from the time we were dating, I, I knew that he drank alcohol and that he even smoked a little bit of marijuana, but it was never too bad. But after he lost that job, like two and a half years into our marriage, he, he things just went downhill from that moment. After that, he, he tried to get a job. He 
he could not find a job, and he just got into drugs heavily. So those years were very hard, very, very hard um, to see him going down, down and down, little by little, and having this fear and having this love for my son and knowing that I needed to protect him. And I, I, he, it was my responsibility to look after him. I looked for jobs in which I could actually take my son with me so I could make a living and be with him at the same time. So I would work as a nanny during the day and I went to school at night because I always wanted to expand my education, you know, to have a better future. It was very hard for me to see the, the man that I loved, the father of my, my son, going in, into that trap. And I remember that there were times even when um, I would see him on the street and I would stop him to talk to him and he wouldn't even recognize me. He would, didn't know that it was me. He was totally lost. They come to see me. I tried to help him. I tried talking to him. I went to therapy. I went to Alcoholic Anonymous organization to look for help. I tried to do everything that I could to help him. But I feel that I, I, I was failing. I, I could not help him. One evening, I remember walking to the bus stop because I, I, I was going to school. And then I forgot something, a book or something. I needed to go back to our, our apartment to get it. So I walked back to my apartment. And as I was getting close to it, I noticed that there was a car parked right in front of it. And I noticed that there were, it was full of men. There were at least five men inside that car. And it was full of smoke. And for some reason, I looked closer and I thought, what are they doing? And then when I looked inside the car, there was a little boy in there. And that boy was my son, my baby. And I got so upset. I banged on the window and I opened that door and I told him, give me my son. This is the last time that you do this to him. So that day was the day when I decided to end my marriage. That, I think that was the day when I actually stopped loving my husband because I realized that I could not trust him. I could not even trust my son to him. It was very hard to end the relationship. How, how do you do that, you know, after being so many years with a person? Those days after he left, of course, it was better without him, but at the same time, I, I, I had fear. I, had, I, I feared that he would come back. I feared that I would not be able to give my son a, a stable environment, that, that, that he could also fall into that trap as, as he would grow up. And I was desperate, I was hopeless. I, I, it, I, it was really hard. Those days were um, times of um, despair for me, not knowing what to do. People make choices. And that freedom to make choices comes from God. He has given us that freedom. And that is why he cannot stop people from doing bad things. And I know that it happens in our lives sometimes that we have these longings, we have these questions, we have these uh, things that we don't really know the reason. But if we are patient, the answer will come one day. And then uh, we will finally have that peace that we, we are looking for.